Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is from Power System Analysis and from Chapter 2. Here we'll be discussing series impedance of transmission lines and especially uh, we'll solve example 4.1 which deals with the resistance. Now the aluminium conductor steel reinforced or ACSR as it is called it looks like something like this you can see these black strands they are the steel strands uh, to give strength to the whole cable and the outer uh, whitish looking uh, they are the uh, aluminium conductors now also shown here these are the steel one and these are the aluminium conductors uh, name is given like here it is said 48 aluminium that means these outer ones they have the 48 um, strands and there are seven steel strands so these are the seven steel strands now resistance uh, there are two types of resistance defined one is called the dc resistance of a conductor and it is specified for particular temperatures given by this formula rho is the conductivity length L and area of cross section and the AC resistance is given by this formula RAC is P loss divided by I RMS square so we will we'll be primarily dealing with the DC resistance here ok one point we have to keep in mind that the actual DC resistance of a standard conductor is greater than the value computed here now what we are computing here is for length L now in this case if you see this is from here to here is length L but actual conductor length is slightly greater than that because if you see follow this this conductor this length is more and therefore the uh, actual value will be more uh, than they calculated and uh, there is a simple technique to cater for that and that is we add 2% the increased resistance due to spiraling is estimated as 2% for a concentrically stranded conductor so the conductor which are uh, uh, concentrated or decentered around the center so like this here and as shown here the uh, relation between increase in temperature and the resistance is shown by this diagram and uh, the easiest way is that we just keep this formula in mind that the if the increase in resistance divided by the original resistance is the increase in total temperature divided by the original temperature so now, now this capital T is fixed and for hard drawn aluminum it is 228 so in, in this example we will be using uh, the hard drawn aluminum so for capital T we will use 228 now there is a skin effect also you might have heard for DC there is no skin effect and therefore the resistance is uniform uh, along this uh, area along the uh, whole dimension of the conductor but due to the change in frequency or alternating frequency due to AC there is a skin effect that means the electron flow in the center will be virtually uh, nil but more electrons will concentrate on the outer side and this is called the skin effect and because of this there will be a slight increase in the value of resistance Another confusion is that the United States they use the dimension foot and uh, uh, foot pound etc. and we use the uh, SI units in meters etc. Now in length is given in, in feet, area is given in circular mill. Now we'll see what is circular mill and rho is in ohms per circular mill 
Now, since most of the books are uh, in still, uh, they follow the United States uh, or the written in the United States, therefore, it is important that we learn this one. Now, what is mill? A mill is one thousandth of an inch. So, one inch divided by one thousand is equal to one mill or 10 raised to the power minus 3 of an inch. And a circular mill is a circular mill or C mill it is called is the area. So circular mill is always for area of a circle having a diameter of 1 mill. So if the diameter is 1 mill or 1000 of an inch then this area will be called 1 circular mill. And I have explained here how uh, the formulas have been uh, uh, driven that is area is pi r square then r is d by 2 square and pi by 4 d square now one circular mill is equal to pi by 4 and for d we put one mill and therefore we can say that one circular mill is equal to pi by 4 square mill our circle if the circle has a diameter of d mill then it will be the formula will be like this, solving or uh, converting this into C mil, 1 C mil divided by pi by 4 from here, and so D square C mil. Now the crux is that we just keep in mind that if the dia is in D mil, then the area will be D square C mil. So this is the only thing we have to remember. Okay. In the book, he has given reference to uh, table A3, so this I have reproduced. The only thing from this table for the time being we will extricate is that the DC resistance is given at 20 degrees centigrade and it is given for 1000 foot. But the AC resistance is given at two temperatures, 20 degree and 50 degree and it is given in ohms per mile. So this is the difference, keep in mind, this is in foot, this is in miles. So we have to keep this point in mind. Now let's do example 4.1. The table for the electrical characteristics of aluminium marigold standard conductor lists a DC resistance of this. So the table gives this value per 100 foot at 20 degree centigrade. And the tables also give AC resistance at 0. Uh, 0956 ohms per mile at 50 degree centigrade. Now the conductor has 61 strands and its C mill or the area is this much. We have to verify the DC resistance and we have to find the ratio of AC to DC resistance. Okay, so now this is the standard marigold table and so uh, as we had already discussed that because of this shape there will be an increase in DC resistance so we have to keep that in mind and that increase as we told was about 2% so let's calculate the first part DC resistance this formula will use for DC and from the table the value of rho is 17 so we'll use 17 from this table for hard aluminum okay and also there is a 2% increase we have to keep in mind so first of all the first part row is 17 length is 1000 feet area from here is 113 10 raised to the power 3 C mil and multiplied by 2% increase. So R at 20 degree will be 0 0.0158. So this is our calculated value and this is the value from the table. So they match and we can also just uh, refer to another table. Here also the resistance for 100 feet at 20 degree centigrade is 0 0.0155 and 8 obviously uh, would be there so they have the uh, same value so this is the first part now we come to the second part of the question that is we have to find the ratio of AC to DC resistance 
Now note that since AC resistance is given in, uh, for 50 degree centigrade and per mile here, 50 degree centigrade and per mile, for making a comparison we have to calculate the DC resistance at 50 degree centigrade and also per mile. So for that we will use this formula here and from here we will now uh, calculate the resistance at 50 degree. We have already calculated resistance at 20 degree. So we will use that. So this was the resistance calculated at 20 degree from here. Capital T we will be using 228 as I mentioned uh, earlier from the table. Temperature 50 and temperature 20 and this is the value of resistance at 50 degree centigrade but this is for 1000 feet. We have to calculate this in per mile. So we know one mile has 5280 feet and therefore we multiply this by 5.280. Uh, this is already for 1000 so 5.28 and so this is the value we are getting for 50 degree centigrade and per mile and now we can compare the two. So our AC we had calculated this earlier, our DC we calculated now. So this is the ratio and there is an increase. Logically there shouldn't be increased, the resistance should be same but because of the skin effect our AC increases and you can see that there is an increase of 3.7% from here you can see it is 3.7% increase due to the skin effect. So I hope this gives you an understanding how you can solve this type of question easily. Thank you.